absolutely beautiful Taurus friends and welcome to your horoscope for April of 2022 where I get to say happy birthday this month Taurus happy happy birthday especially if you are in the first part of that birthday um, cycle for the Aries tour for the April Taurus friends happy happy birthday it is a busy month the 11th house is particularly busy and then your energy gets busy because not only do we have the sun moving in we've got mercury moving in we're going to also have an eclipse the first one of 2022 happening at 10 degrees of your sign so lots going on Taurus not just in the sky but there's plenty going on in the astro community as well I hope to see you growing your astrology business growing your astrology knowledge with us at OPA, ESAR. I've got stuff going on. There is just stuff going on. It is abundantly available for you to study and to grow your businesses, many different kinds of businesses in a lot of different ways out there. So I've got all of that in the description box down below for you. And if you want to know if this, visit, this video that you're listening to is for you, check it out in the description box down below. I let you know who this is for and all of that good stuff. All right, beautiful Taurus friends, let's get in here and see what's coming up around birthday time. Right at the beginning of the month, we've got a new moon on the first in the energy of Aries. This is going to be at 11 degrees of Aries, lighting up your 12th house space. So this is your new moon before birthday time that says, all right, Taurus, plant your seeds of intention. Where do you want to grow spiritually in this next year? Right? Where do you want to remember as you go to travel through your, your next annual rotation, where do you want to remember self-care, to rest, to be mindful of actions, attitudes, and behaviors that are really about your own undoing? Where do you want to remember, Taurus, that it is not always grind down and go, that self-care, rest, meditation, downtime, working behind the scenes. These are all important things for you to remember to initiate because no one can do them for you, right? Initiate. Aries, I take care of me in this special quiet retreat time. Now, I also think that this new moon is phenomenal, Taurus, if you are working on a little something behind the scenes, or you've got creative skills, or you've got talents, or you needed even a fresh perspective on something from the past. It is still your 12th house. This could be that breath of fresh air you've been waiting for since November of 2021, and really all the way back until 2003. So let me know what that is for you in the comment section down below, Taurus, okay? Now, on the fifth we're going to have venus your ruling planet move into the energy of pisces so lighting up this 11th house space venus moving into the 11th house socially you get beautiful right you get magnetic there's something magnetic about you it brings in opportunities to have not only people and relationships come to your 11th house which is clubs organizations friends social spaces and I include social media in there as well your long-range plans goals designs are you resetting them are you magnetizing and, and embracing people or organizations in a different way in your life now also with Venus moving into the energy of Pisces one Venus still likes money so you can have money making opportunities that become more abundantly available to you at a social level and we're able to see you achieve those things but but two, you could have somebody who you thought was maybe just a friend become more than a friend. You could be dating and you're like, uh, story, I'm not trying to date online, gross, right? Whatever your attitude has been about it, something could come to you, someone could come to you online and it is a really magnetic uh, connection that is there as well. Now, I will tell you, I think that that's beautiful and I'm excited and there is a sense of romance that's in the air when Venus gets in this particular area, especially because it's exalted, so in really good space in Pisces, but you also want to make sure that you are not being played, scammed, or any of those things, so protect your heart. Don't, like, defend to the death. But be mindful, ask the big kid questions you need to ask if you want to have big kid relationships, okay? As we get to the 10th, we see Mercury ushering, waving the flag, bannering its way into the energy of Taurus, making space for the sun to come. As Mercury moves into the energy of Taurus, for you, Taurus, you may find that you get very busy. You're like, whoa, 
I got all these emails to return. I have to make decisions. Lots of conversation is going on. You know, Mercury trying to be Mercury in the slower paced energy of Taurus can make you feel a little zizzle a little bit. So you need to keep that in mind, but also, this is great for you, Taurus, to get out of your old ways of thinking and maybe just get new perspective. Taurus, I think something that is phenomenally useful for you is if you feel stuck or you feel like you can't quite get a different perspective, you're not quite grasping it, take your physical body, take the hipsies, take the thighs, take them outside and stand and look in different directions at different things. Move something in your house. It doesn't have to be forever, but move it and welcome in the new perspective. I find that very physical things can be very convincing for Taurus to get a different perspective. And Mercury here could be really, really good for that. We can also just find you talking a lot as we see Mercury in that energy of Taurus, okay? On the 12th, we've got the Jupiter-Neptune conjunction happening in Pisces, again, lighting up this 11th house space. Now, Jupiter and Neptune coming together. We're not going to see them hit over and over and over and over again. Instead, they're going to come together, and this is what we're doing at 23 degrees of Pisces. Now, this is the energy, Taurus, that is like anything's possible. Absolutely anything is possible possible. You want to travel. You want to have an experience that's really different than anything you've ever experienced. You want to work in the realm of, of charity or giving in some way, shape, or form. You can absolutely have this. And I honestly think because both Jupiter and Neptune know no boundaries, you may have this sense of like status quo is not cutting it. I have to go. I have got to get out there. Whatever out there is for you, right? And it is a wonderful energy to make dreams happen because anything's possible. But also, Taurus, I want you to be mindful under this energy that you might have to have a reality check on what you're thinking is possible. It's not that what you're dreaming and what you want and what that ideal is is not doable, especially in this 11th house space for you, right? Around the friends, the groupings, the long range goals and designs. But what may need to happen is you have to get it put down to size. Do you actually have the money to do that project, right? You know, if you're gonna go ask somebody to invest in your business, do you have a plan together to, to show them? What is the practical side of things that maybe this Piscean energy has been a little vague about that you have to not just have the idea but also get the nice casing to, to put it in to actually make that things happen, right? And my example still with Pisces energy is that before a chair was a chair, it was just a thought, it was just a vision, and that's very much so now, but in order for that vision to come together, we had to have some wood or some something to actually make a chair. So make sure you have what you need or you're talking 11th house, Mercury and Taurus, to people who can help you make your vision a reality, okay? Very exciting. Now, on the 14th, we see Mars is moving into the energy of Pisces, so speeding all of that up. <laughs> so you are very busy in an 11th house kind of way. Now Mars is ready to take action, do things, strategize, get things done in the energy of Pisces. Mars and Pisces does not get to just be direct and go right at it, and it can be a little bit vague where you're like, okay, maybe I kind of see what the action is, but I don't really want to do it that way. You know, you're coming up with different, more creative ways to get things done. You're moving your table and chairs around and taking yourself outside to get a different perspective on how you can make the things in your life come up with solutions that are maybe that creative third option that you couldn't see before. Now, also, Mars and Pisces, just in general, I will tell you. Under Jupiter and Neptune, the questions that we're going to all be asked is, is it actually good for everybody? Is it actually going to help people? So with Mars in Pisces now, go out and help people. Think about what you're doing. Does it help people? And that doesn't mean that you do it for them, right? Does this solve a problem that people have? 
And if the answer to that is yes, go be of service. Go take that out there. And uh, sometimes just the way to relieve pressure is to stop thinking so much about ourselves and go be about other people, okay? On the 16th, we're going to have a full moon at 26 degrees of Libra. This will light up your sixth house space, okay? So now the sixth house is about daily routines, health, wellness, projects, co-workers, being of service in some way. Your medical practitioners also land in here, okay? So at the full moon, we're being asked to end something, acknowledge something, or make an adjustment. And there is some, there's some adjustment I think that is needed here, Taurus, where it's like, where have you been too much relying on other people or maybe another resource to get something done and you're having to like rebalance? Right? The sun is over in the energy of Aries, which is the eye energy, right? And it's in the 12th house for you. So it's like, where have you been going too hard, Taurus? And it's like, hold on, I actually need to rest if I'm going to be able to have my health on point, have my body on point, get that project done. What do you need to do to reset Taurus that allows your me to give to the we as efficiently as is possible. And so I think that this particular moon will definitely light that up for you in your daily routines and your wellness, okay? On the 19th, the sun moves into the energy of Taurus. Happy birthday. Can't wait to see what you do when you get into this year. The sun in Taurus in general, you know, it's delicious. It's, de it's a time that's ruled by Venus. I mean, it's good. It's like I'm maintaining, I'm appreciating things. I'm bringing some beauty into my life. I'm having that delicious decadent food, right? I'm letting my life be quality, luxury, secure. I'm looking at my little possessions and I like them or I'm deciding what I don't like. Whatever it is, you've got a nice birthday energy here on your table. The 29th is a busy day. First of all, we're going to see Pluto step into its actual retrograde at 28 degrees of Capricorn. Now, Pluto moved into pre-retrograde shadow time in January. It will take its retrograde here at 28 degrees in your ninth house space. This is not new, Taurus. You've been looking at your ninth house energy as it's been transforming. Where has your education transformed, your training, your language, legal situations in your life, teaching, publishing, marketing, broadcasting, your expansion out into the world where has this changed now as Pluto heads into this retrograde until October you may have the opportunity to look at where you're still power struggling in this area what is it in your ninth house space that you are finding you're you've, you've got a power struggle what are some actions attitudes or behaviors that you have that are actually destroying your success in these particular areas and during the retrograde you'll get to work on those work those out you know do you not have a great daily routine or did you are you out in the world and you're feeling a little bit ungrounded your thinking your beliefs your faith needs to change because what you're currently working with is a power struggle so you're not actually free in this area what is it where are you thinking you need to be in control of everything? And you may actually find out that a little bit of surrender will help you win. So you'll be working on that until October. And then we'll see um, Pluto leave that post-retrograde shadow time in January of 2023, okay? Also on the 29th, we've got Mercury getting out of your sign for now, moving into the energy of Gemini into your second house. So again, now you're having conversations about money. We're having conversations about possessions value. Mercury is intensely business savvy and Gemini is happy to go out there and network. So you may be networking, you may be teaching, you may be talking, you may be writing contracts and negotiating them. You may be traveling to see siblings and it's costing you a little bit of extra money or you're making those travel plans for the second half of the year. Things like this become available on your table as uh, Mercury moves here. Now Mercury is going to also retrograde in Gemini, not until May, but it's going to pop back into your Taurus energies as well. So just know some things that you're working on now, you'll get a little chance to revise them if you need to as we're moving energies forward, okay? Now, as we close out the month, we are going to have a solar eclipse happening at 10 degrees of Taurus. Now, the solar eclipse is still a new moon. 
Okay, so you're planting your seeds of intention to begin something new and it's in your sign, in your energy. You started to see some change really pop onto your table in November of 2021 when we had some Taurus activation over there. So now you have a continuation of some of that beginning, some of that advancement that is available to you Taurus okay so first thing I want to tell you is plant the seeds of intention over the next six months Taurus who do you want to be how do you want to look how do you want to show up where are you ready to change your external um, environment around yourself to bring it up to current with where you're at in your life what do you what do you want here right your your ruling planet at this time is there it's in Pisces it's been next to this Jupiter and Neptune conjunction what you want is possible especially if you will put the right structures and have the right help in place so I want you to keep that in mind now I would tell you or I would suggest to you if you cannot start a project right here actually on the 30th on the eclipse that's a little bit better the energy is still pretty unstable but do you trust your intuition way before you trust me okay all right, my absolutely beautiful Taurus friends, I can't wait to see what this next six months of solar eclipse energy brings to the table, especially as we sprinkle in some other months of having some Scorpio lunations as well to make sure you're nicely balanced out. No matter what, enjoy your birthday time if you're in our April section and May babies, I'll get to telling you happy birthday next month. I'm a May baby as well. I love you very much. Have a gorgeous month. I look forward to seeing you at the Astro events and of course around this channel. Bye Taurus.